Okay, my first tip is all about stealth. Now these canals do get a lot of people walking along them, so the fish are used to activity. But if you come bowling up making a load of noise with all your fish and tackle in a specific area, they'll move out and you might not catch them. One of the most important things I find is with the jig heads, is keeping them in the right storage device. So this is a box, one of our stack and store boxes in the clear with a load of jig heads in. You can hear how much noise that makes. So if you're walking up, that's in your bag. It's jiggling along, it makes a lot of noise. It's quite harsh, sharp noise as well, and the fish will hear it, possibly move away. So what I do instead is store them in one of our compact storage boxes. These have a specific foam area where you can just put the jig heads in and they stay in place so they don't move, so they don't get any noise at all. In fact, if you're fishing light, these are great because you can put all the jig heads you need in the one side and then put all your lures in the other side. That's pretty much all you need in terms of your storage. But if you do need more lures, I'm, I'm terrible for it, I take loads with me. Just have another uh, clear stack and store box with all your soft plastics in. And you know, that doesn't make the noise that that first one did at all. So the tip is keep them stored properly and keep the noise down to a minimum. Obviously one of the main techniques of catching these little fish, after jigging for me really, is the drop shot. It's a great secondary technique. But one thing I'll add to my drop shot setup is one of these little tungsten beads. We do them in, in packs now, and they're brilliant for adding extra action to your lure. So if you're not fishing a, a pintail or whatever on, on your drop shot, if you're fishing a paddle tail, when you drop that lure down and the, the weight, the drop shot weight is not acting on it, it kind of just dithers down in the water and you, you don't get any weight on it to make that paddle tail move. The tungsten weight changes all that, so in the water, once your drop shot weight is down and on the bottom and that's falling down, the weight of the tungsten bead makes that paddle tail work. So even on the slightest drop down, you're still going to get some action which will entice the fish. There's nothing worse than seeing your lure just kind of just uh, in the water. This, this changes all of that, the tungsten bead. They're, they're very compact, they come in two different colours, you've got the reds, uh, as, a, as a strike point and blacks as well if you want something a little bit more covert. Uh, but the tungsten material that's used means they can be very small and still quite heavy, uh, giving your, your lure plenty of action. The great thing about these as well, once you've tied your rig up, they can fit over the hook really quickly, put your lure in behind that keeps them in place. If you don't want to use them, if you want to change to a pintail lure or a split tail or whatever, you can take your lure off and then just quickly take the bead out of the equation and then you're back fishing just a standard drop shot rig. Really, really good little uh, edge that is. When fishing for perch on canals, one of the main areas you're going to get the bite is just as the lure drops and touches down on the bottom. Now you can, you can increase that hang time that you get just before it touches the bottom by having the rod tip up if you're fishing with a jig head and letting it fall down on an arc and that'll increase the time that it takes to get down there. If you want to increase your time further, one of the great rigs for that, for me, is the Carolina rig. What this does is has a weight separate from the hook, from the lure, giving you that slower free fall in the water because there's no weight, apart from the weight of the hook and the lure, falling down to the bottom. Now the way you do that is you set up normally with a, a fluorocarbon leader, tie a single hook on. I use one of our drop shot hooks because they're, they're super sharp and they've got a great, great bend on them. Uh, Normally I'll, I'll hook most fish on these just because they are so super sharp. And then up from that on the fluorocarbon leader, I've got one of our cone weights. This is five gram because I'm fishing a light setup here. You can go heavier, but you know you don't really need to on canals like this. I don't think you're not going to cast too far and they're not too deep. And what that does is the, the cone weight will sit there, hit the bottom first, and then you've got that slow fall of the, the lure and the hook afterwards. And that'll increase the amount of time that that lure is hanging in the water and falling down, the amount of time that the, the perch can look at it, and the amount of time it's gonna be in their air, eye line before they, they hit it. So it, you're more likely to get a, a bite using that technique and slowing it down. Obviously, like I say, you can, you can do that on a jig head by having your, your rod held up high and letting it swing down an arc, but this just gives you that extra bit. The cone weight on the Carolina rig is just kept in place by one of our Predator uh, float stops just underneath there. I don't use a bead or anything. And also, if you get a bigger fish and they bite, you've got no resistance there. The, the cone weight, as they, they take the lure, the cone weight will move away and up the, up the leader. So they feel little resistance 
Um, so again, you get the bite, they're more likely to, to keep the lure in the mouth, bang, and you're in. Another great addition on the end of this small Carolina rig for me, when, especially when times are tough and the, the fish aren't biting, is one of our drop shot fry lures. Now these are buoyant, the body on them floats up. So with just the weight of the hook, it will sit up in the water. So you imagine if you want to pull this along, slowly along the bottom, so the weight is on the bottom and the lure is just sitting up. You can just twitch it along. And that's going to be, it's not going to float too high as you're twitching it. So it's probably going to be maybe four or five inches off the bottom. Just as you're twitching that along, the fibers on the back are pulsing. It's just moving at the right height. It's a presentation you won't get with many other setups, maybe on a drop shot, but that is a brilliant little lure to go on the end of the, uh, the diminutive Carolina rig. Give that a go as well, see how you get on. This time of year when it's, the water's fairly cold, it's fairly cold outside the water as well today, and the fish uh, are in specific areas, they'll shoal up, especially around prey fish. I like to take two rods along with me. The first one is a jigging rod, so just a little jig head with a small lure. This rod I'll use for searching areas, so I'll, I'll fan cast around a likely looking area, find the fish. Once I start getting bites and maybe picking up a few fish, I'll then switch to my second rod, which is normally set up on a drop shot setup. Now the reason for this is, with the jig you can work waters fast, you can find out where the bites are, but you might not get as many bites as you, as you want because you're working it fairly quickly through a specific area. Once you know you've kind of roughly worked out where the fish are based on bites, you can get on the drop shot and then hold that lure in that area for longer. So you're giving the fish a slower target and one that's held over them for longer, so you've got more chance of getting a bite. So that's another tip. Go with two rods, two different techniques. Search, catch. Give it a go. Let's face it, the reason you go out on canals like this is not to catch monsters. If they come along, that's great. But normally it's just to get bites. Feel that little pluck on the line and get your buzz. So when it's hard and you're not getting your bites, you need to work a bit, bit harder to try and get that pluck and get your adrenaline fix. Now, for me, one of the, the best ways of scratching around to get these little perch biting is to forget the jig head and go with one of our little tungsten beads and one of the drop shot hooks. So you're kind of jigging, but you really, really like jigging. Now, what this does, it gives you a very small weight, a very long drop time in the water, and it also gives you a lot more articulation because this bead will move away from the hook. It won't move away too far. So in the water, what you'll get there's a real nice articulation on this unweighted lure as it moves around, as it falls down to the bottom. Now this is one of our uh, micro fries. Sometimes even, even in this size, which is, which is tiny, it's only a few centimetres long, you might want to go even smaller. So what I would do is with this setup, take the lure off, just use my fingernails or bite it, they're nice and soft. Take the head away, put your pocket, and then you're left with the tail, which is where all the action is. So the body is there to give it some depth and a little bit of a silhouette, but mainly what they're hitting is the action of this tail. So all I do then is go onto one of our drop shot hooks, and all you've got then is a little tail. This tucks the bead to give it a little bit of weight, and that gives you a small setup. You can even go smaller on the hook size, but mainly they're going to be hitting this and getting that point of the hook. And even the smallest perch that will give you a bite in these conditions will have a go at that, especially if there's a couple of them that get a bit competitive, they'll have a go at that. And that can be a real session saver, so you don't go home blanking, freezing and wondering what the hell you're doing going out in these conditions. So go small, go lighter, give that a go, and that could save a session where you're going to get a blank. It may look a little bit strange, but it does really, really work. A lot of canals, like the one behind me, look fairly barren when you look at them. They're just a flat expanse of water, long, without much going on. The main features on these canals, apart from the central boat channel, which you won't get on all canals, but on a canal like this, which is usually you do get, you get the little dips down as you have the deeper section. But for perch, when you're after a bite, when you're scratching around for the smaller fish, the main area for me to target is down the edges. Where you've got the wall on either side, or even up against a lock like we've got up here somewhere, uh, the walls provide shelter on one side. It's like if you're in a room and you, you, 
if, if you're a perch, you're worried, you're, you're worried you're gonna get eaten by something. If you're in a room and you're worried about something, you might back up against the wall. So all you've got to worry about is what's in front of you and not what's coming up behind you. So these perch will tend to sit down by these walls in, a, in couples or a, a, you know, small numbers of fish. So what you need to do is just fish down the edge, dibble it around a bit. It doesn't take much to get small, small perch biting if they are in the feeding mood. What you've got to do is just little drops and low, lower it down as well instead of just letting it drop. If you lower your lure down then pull it up, you'll get action into the lure. Keep working along the walls and you'll find the fish. It's, it's, it's fairly basic, but it can make a difference to a day. They tend to be at your feet. If you go in with the other tips, they keep quiet. Keep chopping and changing your, your, your techniques. Work the walls. You'll find the fish eventually and then you'll have a, a decent session.